likewise, nice to meet you all. I'm sure I'll, I'll know your name by the well, next hour or so. Nice to meet you all know your name. So, um, we're going to do a, a food and wine pairing. Uh, it takes about 45 minutes, and as you can see, it is a hands-on thing. Uh, and then you'll move into the aroma wheel. We'll, we're going to uh, learn about uh, component aromas of wine, uh, both good and bad ones, because there's some bad ones on that wheel, too. Uh, and then you'll come back here into the kitchen and just have a good old time cooking up, uh, cooking up your lunch and an hour lunch. Uh, all the staff here will, will be able to partake as well. Um, one of the things that you're going to be uh, scored on for your Iron Chef competition is the wine that you pair with the food. And so there may be some things that you can take out of this presentation that you can apply to uh, picking the appropriate wine. There'll be several wines out, and as you're creating your dish, uh, you can be trying wine and talking to the chefs about the wine that you're thinking about pairing with the food and why you're thinking about doing it. Uh, so it is it is part of your final score um, for the uh, Iron Chef. We'll get more into the Iron Chef uh, later. But um, first of all, I'm going to teach you a concept that we call taste balance. And taste balance is knowing how the taste of food <coughs> react and actually change the taste of wine. And a, um, by the way, this is a PowerPoint presentation. You guys don't see it. I learned a long time ago it's much better to just talk without you looking at the screen. Um, but I kind of need to use it to keep myself on track. Um, also, this presentation I'd be happy to email to you if you, you, know, if you find that something you may be able to use back home. But when we look at this concept of taste balance, we're always looking at the dominant taste. What is the dominant taste in the food? And knowing that dominant taste, how is it going to have an effect on the wine? Um, and, and the dominant taste of anything that you eat or drink is going to change the taste of the next thing that you eat or drink. So in some cases here, you'll be trying the food, you'll be trying the wine, it will be a very profound change in the taste of the wine. All ten of you will experience the same thing. Sometimes it will be a very subtle change in the taste of the wine. Um, a, a great example of how tastes change the, the next thing that you put in your mouth, the taste of something will change the next thing you put in your mouth is, is uh, brushing your teeth and having a glass of orange juice. Have you ever done that? In the morning, bad. brush your teeth. Yeah, yeah. The orange juice tastes nasty. It tastes bad. Well, what's going on there? The dominant taste of toothpaste is sweet. More than anything else, toothpaste is sweet. Orange juice is sweet and sour and bitter and fruity. Well, that sweet toothpaste makes the orange juice more sour, more bitter, less sweet less fruity, it makes the orange juice taste bad. So those are the kind of reactions we look for. And when, you know, a winery chef is a little bit different uh, sort of position than, say, a restaurant chef, because we are thinking about the food and how it pairs with the wine. I mean, a restaurant <coughs> might not necessarily know the wine that the guests are going to order. When you're when you're a chef, regardless of where you're a chef, when you make good food, you're balancing taste, sweet, sour, and salt, and bitter, and savory. You're, you're balancing those things to make a nice dish of food. We just enter wine into the equation. We make the food taste great, try it with the wine. Even though it's making the wine taste kind of funky, make adjustments to the food, and then it comes in taste balance with the wine. So it's all a little balancing out. And Essentially what we're trying to do is minimize the change in taste of the wine. If my food is rapidly changing the taste of the wine, it's making the wine taste bad. It's making the wine taste bad. I, I can't take a, a bad glass of wine and make it taste good with my food. But I can take a good glass of wine and make it taste bad with my food. Now, sometimes the food and the wine appear in such a way that the wine might express itself a little more. It might not come alive in your mouth. 
but it's not becoming more sour or more bitter or less fruity. These are subtle little changes. It's just the wine's expressing itself. The bottom line is we want a good food and wine pairing minimizes the change in taste of the wine. Minimizes the change in taste. And we want the wine to taste the way the winemaker intended it to taste, or the way you may have grown to love. Glass of wine that you love to drink you know, on a special occasion. You want to buy this $200 bottle of wine once a year because you love it. And if the food is paired with it, it makes it taste like something else other than what you've grown accustomed to. That's a bad food. So we want to minimize the change in taste of the wine. We taste five things. There are five basic tastes. Thousands of flavors. We'll talk about flavor taste five things, sweet, sour, salt, bitter, and a fifth taste called umami. Has anybody heard of umami? Savory. Savory, yeah. exactly. Umami is a savory taste. It's a protein taste. More specifically, glutamic acid, which is an amino acid mm -hmm. building protein. And, and we've grown to recognize that, in fact, that there is this fifth taste called umami. Uh, it's something that Ten years ago, not too many people were talking about. Twenty years ago, nobody was talking about unless you were in Asia. hundred years ago in Asia, they always felt that there was these five tastes. Uh, and we finally recognize it as one of the tastes now. But no more important than the other <coughs> sweet, sour, salt, bitter, umami, all those tastes in food will have an effect on the wine you pair with that food. So what we're going to do is in each case you'll take a sip of the wine, go to the food, and then you'll return to the wine to see uh, first how the wine tasted, and secondly how the food changed the taste of the wine. Um, we'll start with the apple. you got to get four bites out of that apple, so don't take too big of a bite. It's a golden delicious apple, which is a sweet apple. The dominant taste, you know, again, foods are a mixture of taste. The apple's got sweet, sour, bitter. But more than anything, it's sweet, um, especially since we have toss it sugar. Just to make sure that the dominant taste is, is sweet. And what you'll do, you'll start with the white symphony, you'll take a sip of it, a bite of the apple. Make sure you chew up the apple and swallow it before returning to the white symphony. We want to see how the apple changes the taste of the white symphony. If, if, you, if you just wash the apple down with the wine, then you're adding apple to the wine as opposed to seeing how the apple. Take a, take a little bite, chew it up, swallow it, and return to the white soup. So go ahead and start with the white soup for y'all. Everybody take a sip. And then at your own pace, take a bite of the apple, chew it up.